This is footage from the Pacific Theater of World War II, taken about 70 years ago. Color reconstruction of the film using clues from materials of the time has brought realities obscured in the original black and white reels vividly to light. Young men on a special mission are getting their gear camouflaged with black ink. They are carrying bombs. But attached to one of their backpacks is a small doll, a talisman. On the 70th year, marking the end of World War II, NHK has produced a documentary about the Pacific War featuring archival footage that we have restored and colorized. The hues were determined with the help of experts in various fields. The latest digital technology was employed to reconstruct the colors as faithfully as possible. Footage originally shot in color was also added to depict the Pacific War as fully as possible. Color shows realities not always visible in black and white. The Japanese people, from children to adults, faced all-out conflict. This documentary shows the war as they lived it. How did people get through the turmoil of the three years and eight months from the beginning to the end of the Pacific War? This is a full color record of the Japanese people and the war. In the pre-dawn hours of December 8, 1941, Japan time, Japanese forces were standing by in the waters off Hawaii. They attacked Pearl Harbor, and the Pacific War began. The United States was strengthening an economic embargo against Japan, and diplomatic negotiations had broken down. So Japan decided to go to war. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. Taihun Yeri Kainungu, Junior Tioka, Ugan Lokiha Pio, 
帝国陸海軍は本8日未明西太平洋においてアメリカイギリス軍と戦闘状態に入れ The surprise attack shocked the United States. When footage of the attack on Pearl Harbor is viewed in color, the destruction can be seen vividly in flames and black smoke. On a clear winter day, a radio broadcast announced the nation had entered into war. Trepidation, a sense that Japan had taken an irrevocable step in waging war against the United States, can be seen on the faces of the people in the film. The Japanese military launched operations in Southeast Asia around the same time it attacked Pearl Harbor. This was aimed at acquiring resources in the region, such as oil. Japan's government called this the Greater East Asia War. The public was informed that the war was to liberate colonized Asian nations from the United States and the powers in Europe. And that a new order called the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere was to be formed with Japan at its center. About two months into the war, Japanese troops began streaming south down the Malay Peninsula. After a fierce battle against British troops based in Singapore, Japan captured the island. This is a newsreel from Japan. The British Empire's flag and a white flag signifying surrender are brought out. This is the historical meeting where Japanese Lieutenant General Tomoyuki Yamashita cemented his fame and his nickname, the Tiger of Malaya. Tekshoro Behind the glorious victories lay high Japanese casualties. The colorized film highlights the white boxes containing the remains of the war dead. Oh, 
かくて花火園無月占領は滞りなく完了しましたビルマ第一の仏塔シュエダゴン・タオタのもと幸運堂々の二条パッと一斉に開いた大輪の花今純白の落下さんはミュートに開いて一体また一体と相次いで紺碧の空を甘くなる大日本帝国一海軍万歳万歳万歳Two months into the war, scenes of crowds jubilantly celebrating the victories were filmed across the country. December 7, 1941. Before long, the U.S. counterattacks began. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. time a battlefield in the Pacific War was filmed in color was about six months into the conflict. This coincided with a turning point in the war. In the Battle of Midway, the Imperial Japanese military suffered its first overwhelming defeat since the start of the Pacific War. Aircraft carriers were sunk, and hundreds of aircraft were destroyed in the battle. But the people back home in Japan were not told the truth about Midway. This map shows how far the Japanese military had advanced across the Asia Pacific in 1942. The trigger of the Pacific War occurred in 1931, when Japan's military staged an event as a pretext and overran what was then called Manchuria. Six years later, it invaded the Chinese continent. The Pacific War started as fighting with China continued. The battles of the Pacific War extended across a wide area, from the freezing snows of the Aleutian Islands in the north to warm tropical regions in the south. As the war's battle lines expanded, the systems to supply weapons and food began to break down. Officers and soldiers preparing to fight the enemy had to operate under punishing conditions. There's very little food left. Since we landed, the daily ration of rice has been reduced to 150 grams, but it's running out.
It's a hopeless situation. The servicemen fought on the front lines, but they were also supported on the home front. One important role of women back home was to send care packages to servicemen on the front lines. The colorized historical footage shows that people were going about their daily lives in ways little different from today. Footage taken across the country provides a remarkable record of places and scenes before they were destroyed in the Pacific War. Hiroshima's commercial exhibition hall is captured in footage of the city. It later became the Atomic Bomb Dome. First time since the war began, the Japanese military fought elite U.S. troops in a full-scale ground battle. I never expected the American troops to be powerful. We were told they would run if we made a bayonet charge with our rifles. The Japanese military had underestimated the U.S. forces, and so had we. This is footage taken by the U.S. military of captured Japanese servicemen. The Japanese supply route had been cut and many officers and soldiers died of starvation and disease. There was no food, so we ate grass, or lizards and snakes. We put anything edible into our mouths. We were all weak, so when we ate grass, we got diarrhea. People developed fevers and collapsed. Once someone collapsed, they never got back up again. The Japanese military suffered complete defeat after six months of fighting. Footage of the actual battlefields were never shown in Japan. The military command informed the public about the retreat from Guadalcanal by calling it a strategic withdrawal. Amid these setbacks, 
a newsreel once produced, introducing the Asian countries the military had advanced into. Local students are shown being taught Japanese. It's a propaganda film promoting the greater East Asia co-prosperity sphere. Bad news began to arrive on the home front in the spring of 1943. Japan's key naval officer, commander-in-chief of the combined fleet, Isoroku Yamamoto, died when U.S. fighter planes shot down his aircraft. Then reports arrived that the Japanese troops defending Atu Island in a battle of endurance had been annihilated. The Imperial headquarters never faced up to the fact of allowing the entire force on the island to be wiped out. Instead, it used the euphemism, Gyokusai, to notify the public of the battle. The term means fighting to the last man and dying heroically, like a shattering gem. Subsequently, a number of prolonged fights that resulted in annihilations were labeled Gyokusai battles. Bereaved families had mixed emotions about Gyokusai. This record describes the feelings of the wife of one of the war dead. Well, I was still stunned by the telegram notifying me of my husband's death. I received a visit from the head of the veterans group. He praised me, saying that it was an honor. You are a serviceman's wife. I was then commended for being the wife of the noble spirit of a fallen hero. So I couldn't show my tears in front of him. I said I had been prepared for this. And bowed. I became stronger. And then... It was too late to cry. As the tide of the war turned, the growing shortage of trained enlisted personnel became serious, and students who had been exempt from conscription were sent off to fight. This was supposedly a glorious occasion. It was filmed in black and white under a rainy sky. But even when colorized, it remains a scene blanketed in gloom. Stay 
が元より追加を作る。しかって、公園の毎日に報いたせまつり、必ず各位の国体に参加したんと。Japanese troops were continuing to struggle on many battlefronts. In July, a crisis was approaching, with Japan's mainland about to become a target. The U.S. captured the Mariana Islands, including Saipan, which Japan had designated as the absolute borderline to defend the home islands. This meant that Japan would now be within range of American B-29 bombers. It was clear that if the war continued, civilian casualties would result. The Tojo cabinet, which started the Pacific War, resigned en masse with the fall of Saipan. But the war went on. Various measures were implemented across the country in preparation for air raids by B-29 bombers. One of them was the demolition of buildings. To limit damage from the spread of fire, areas with many wooden houses were unilaterally raised to create fire breaks of bare land. Behind the newsreels aimed at boosting the people's will to fight was an exhausted Japan. Throughout the footage, people who still had faith that Japan would win are seen with grim expressions. This is footage of the Japanese battleship Musashi, which lies at the bottom of the Philippine Sea. The video was made public in March 2015. The Musashi was built shortly after the start of the Pacific War, along with the battleship Yamato. One of the world's largest battleships at the time, it was revered as a symbol of the Japanese Imperial Navy. Musashi sank during a sea battle off Lady Island in the Philippines. Japan had occupied the Philippines from the start of the Pacific War.
But by 1944, Japan's naval strength lagged far behind that of the US, which had built up a giant fleet. Kamikaze attacks were employed by Japan for the first time during the Battle of the Leyte Gulf. The colorized footage vividly shows the extent of damage on the aircraft used in the attacks. The attacks were termed special. What that meant is that aircraft laden with bombs became weapons themselves in exchange for the pilots' lives. are chrysanthemums given by people bidding them farewell. Many of the pilots were just around 20 years old and with little combat experience. What follows is an excerpt from notes written by a student pilot, age 22. It's true, as a friend of mine said, that a pilot in our special attack force is nothing more than a part of the machine, the part that holds the plane's controls. He has no personality, no emotions, no reason. He is simply an iron filament tucked inside a magnet designed itself to be sucked into an enemy aircraft carrier. we may have no right to say anything but only to hope that our fellow Japanese might combine to make our beloved country the greatest nation possible The Japanese leadership was divided. One camp wanted to enter into peace negotiations after a final push. The other was intent on pursuing the fighting in the homeland to the bitter end. The fighting continued without an exit in sight. Civilians in Japan now started falling victim to the war. U.S. air raids on the Japanese mainland from the Marianas began in November 1944. The B-29 attacks first targeted arms factories, but they soon escalated 
to indiscriminate bombing. On March 10th, 1945, Tokyo was hit by a massive air raid. Numerous incendiary bombs were dropped on the capital. The raid claimed the lives of about 100,000 people over a single night. People died right in front of me. Without a word. I was completely helpless. The streets were covered with piles of burned bodies. And now, U.S. troops began landing on the islands of Okinawa. Okinawa was strategically defined as the front line of Japan's homeland defense. So fighting on the islands involved the 500,000 residents in a war of attrition. Footage shows graphic scenes of Okinawa being destroyed with no means to confront the overwhelming firepower of the enemy. Civilians took shelter with soldiers in caves and dugouts, exposing them to indiscriminate attacks by the US forces. Japan's organized combat in Okinawa came to an end on June 23, 1945. Among the survivors were children desperately seeking refuge amid the battlegrounds. This black and white footage shows a seven-year-old girl, Tomiko Higa. Having become separated from her family, she found her way to a cave where she met an elderly man who gave her a loincloth. Using it as a white flag, she sought out American soldiers. I looked straight at the round hole pointed at me and smiled. At the same time, I let go my left hand that was holding up my pants and waved. With my right hand, I gripped the white flag and held it high. I broke into a run and came to where I could see the ocean. I'm alive, I wanted to shout. The U.S. 
SOS intensified its air raids on the mainland and in Okinawa. This footage shows strafing of anything and everything on the ground. Japan's major cities were being destroyed. On July 26, 1945, the United States, Britain, and China issued the Potsdam Declaration, announcing the terms Japan must accept to obtain peace. But the Japanese government was divided over whether to surrender or put off making a decision. Eleven days later, These are images of Nagasaki, a day after the bombing. Yosuke Yamahata took the photos in black and white, but colorization gives the scenes a vivid new reality. The caption to the picture reads, The disastrous scene of a train in the city. Corpses on the lower left are all those of passengers. They had suffered radiation burns and turned a deep red. The pictures captured not only those who died instantly, but also those who endured great pain while waiting for rescue. Facing this disaster, all possible words and phrases became useless to me. Gazing calmly, Mr. Yamahata snapped the shutter time and again to record what had happened. The camera's eye was cool and without sentiment. The images are a precious record of a reality that defied description in words. August 9th, 
Japan was rocked by the atomic bombing of Nagasaki and the Soviet Union's declaration of war against the Empire of Japan. Shortly afterward, Japan decided to accept the terms of the Potsdam Declaration and surrender. Emperor Showa made the decision, and voices in the military pushing to continue the war even on the mainland were suppressed. August 15, 1945. The sky was sunny and blue, just like the day when the war began. Japan's surrender was announced to the public in a radio broadcast at noon. People heard the voice of the emperor for the first time. The enemy has begun to employ a new and most cruel bomb. The power of which to do damage is indeed incalculable. Should we continue to fight, it would not only result in an ultimate collapse and obliteration of the nation, also lead to the total extinction of human civilization. The hardships to which our nation is to be subjected hereafter will be certainly great. However, it is according to the dictate of time and fate that we have resolved to pave the way for a grand peace for all the generations to come by enduring the unendurable and suffering what is insufferable. Have we truly been defeated? I cannot believe it. On this calm summer day, Japan has become a shameful loser. I burst into tears, but I didn't know for what exactly the tears were pouring down. About three million Japanese troops had to face the defeat abroad. As they watched their comrades fall, some of the servicemen who survived felt a deep sense of guilt. Others felt relief at escaping death. Shigeru Mizuki survived deadly charges and became a cartoonist in post-war Japan. He comments, I suppose in all gyokusai charges, there will be survivors. In the military hierarchy, soldiers were at the bottom, lower than horses. 
I wonder if surviving a suicidal charge was, rather than a cowardly act, one final act of resistance as a human being. The Pacific War lasted for three years and eight months. It claimed the lives of more than three million Japanese alone and left deep scars on many countries. The following is an eyewitness account, written 70 years ago, as Japan faced its utter devastation. Wasn't our work only beginning? Irrespective of the rise and fall of our country, wasn't our main duty to attend to the life and death of each individual. I stood there, unsteadily on my tottering legs. And then the whole group stood up beside me. faces set anew with determination. It's a war. With these words, we had been forced to fight on and on. Forced to do anything and everything without reasoning or questioning. But such words would no longer move us. Now, we saw that no one but us could save this precious life. And we would move forward to help and serve. of peace and its blessings. Men and women of the world, never wage war again. get through the turmoil of the three years and eight months from the beginning to the end of the Pacific War. This is a full-color record of the Japanese people and the war.
in the pre-dawn hours of December 8, 1941, Japan time. Japanese forces were standing by in the waters off Hawaii. They attacked Pearl Harbor, and the Pacific War began. The United States was strengthening an economic embargo against Japan, and diplomatic negotiations had broken down. So Japan decided to go to war. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii by air. The surprise attack shocked the United States. When footage of the attack on Pearl Harbor is viewed in color, the destruction can be seen vividly in flames and black smoke. On a clear winter, this is footage from the Pacific Theater of World War II, taken about 70 years ago. Color reconstruction of the film using clues from materials of the time has brought realities obscured in the original black and white reels vividly to light. <coughs> Young men on a special mission are getting their gear camouflaged with black ink. They are carrying bombs. But attached to one of their backpacks is a small doll, a talisman. On the 70th year marking the end of World War II, NHK has produced a documentary about the Pacific War featuring archival footage that we have restored and colorized. The hues were determined with the help of experts in various fields. The latest digital technology was employed to reconstruct the colors as faithfully as possible. Footage originally shot in color was also added to depict the Pacific War as fully as possible. Color shows realities not always visible in black and white. The Japanese people, from children to adults, faced all-out conflict. This documentary shows the war as they lived it. <laughs>
The first time a battlefield in the Pacific War was filmed in color was about six months into the conflict. This coincided with a turning point in the war. In the Battle of Midway, the Imperial Japanese military suffered its first overwhelming defeat since the start of the Pacific War. Aircraft carriers were sunk and hundreds of aircraft were destroyed in the battle. But the people back home in Japan were not told the truth about Midway. This map shows how far the Japanese military had advanced across the Asia-Pacific in 1942. The trigger of the Pacific War occurred in 1931, when Japan's military staged an event as a pretext and overran what was then called Manchuria. Six years later, it invaded the Chinese continent. The Pacific War started as fighting with China continued. The battles of the Pacific War extended across a wide area, from the freezing snows of the Aleutian Islands in the north to warm tropical regions in the south. As the war's battle lines expanded, the systems to supply weapons and food began to break down. Officers and soldiers preparing to fight the enemy had to operate under punishing conditions. ま、Behind the glorious victories lay high Japanese casualties. The colorized film highlights the white boxes containing the remains of the war dead. で、Two months into the war, scenes of crowds jubilantly celebrating the victories were filmed across the country. The 
December 7, 1941. Before long, the U.S. counterattacks began. No matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through to absolute victory. Today, a radio broadcast announced the nation had entered into war. Trepidation, a sense that Japan had taken an irrevocable step in waging war against the United States, can be seen on the faces of the people in the film. The Japanese military launched operations in Southeast Asia around the same time it attacked Pearl Harbor. This was aimed at acquiring resources in the region, such as oil. Japan's government called this the Greater East Asia War. Public was informed that the war was to liberate colonized Asian nations from the United States and the powers in Europe, and that a new order called the Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere was to be formed with Japan at its center. About two months into the war, Japanese troops began streaming south down the Malay Peninsula. After a fierce battle against British troops based in Singapore, Japan captured the island. This is a newsreel from Japan. The British Empire's flag and a white flag signifying surrender are brought out. This is the historical meeting where Japanese Lieutenant General Tomoyuki Yamashita cemented his fame and his nickname, the Tiger of Malaya. <laughs> 